Hi everyone, I would like to show you a technique I've used here. I've made it just uh, before my trip and just didn't have time to make a video and I didn't know if this will work. Basically, uh, I, most of this technique I've learned from Studio Silver Creek. Go check uh, her channel but I've made some uh, adjustment to fit me and I'll walk you through it I'm going to do uh, something else uh, but with the same technique this was made on a canvas I'm doing uh, it again on this flat canvas but you don't have to this is uh, I think is 12 by 12 inch and you can do it in your art journal wherever you want it and you start by uh, going all around your page or your canvas with white and uh, black acrylic paint just playing around with the colors there is no uh, rhyme or reason just making lots and lots of movement and shades of gray in your background this is just the base for what will come uh, on top so i'm dipping the brush each time a little bit in the white a little bit in the black and as you can see just smearing it around and going in several times if I think there is not enough interest or movement like so so I'm going to finish uh, applying uh, all this uh, paint to my background and then I'll come back I'm back I finished my background I don't know if you can see it but I tried that my edges would be a uh, darker than the inside just because when you do this it uh, makes a uh, everything you do uh, look like there is a uh, depth to it so uh, that's what I've done here now uh, in the, this piece I've done some splattering with white and black but i don't want to wait for the splatter to uh, dry and i also stamped around uh, with a stamp of uh, crackle so i'm going to use the uh, this crackle stamp and instead of splattering and waiting for it to dry i've got this kind of stamp that i think will uh, give interest to my background so first I'm going to stamp around uh, with this uh, crackle uh, stamp again randomly I don't care where it goes you're just adding texture and interest go now let's take this stamp I'm using a Ranger uh, archival ink this also needs to be dry because the next layer I don't want it uh, to smear the ink <laughs> that I just uh, put down so basically this is uh, it the background and I need to uh, be sure it's uh, completely dry before I'm a uh, 
going for the next uh, phase of this uh, thing. So, stamps aside, I have a trace. Uh, the size of uh, this canvas and I've uh, done this design that will go on top here I'm just going to uh, I think I'm going to cut it out so uh, it will be easier to work with it doesn't have to be exact just so it will be uh, easier to work with and I will need my copy paper, carbon paper, or tracing paper, whatever you call it, graphite paper, to trace the pattern I've designed on top of my uh, canvas. So, let's see. I didn't remember it's so big. I'm aligning it uh, with my canvas just so I'll know where I'm uh, working on. Let's move this. this with this with the canvas in the hopes that it won't move while I'm tracing maybe she, maybe I should put a clip on or something let's see a bulldog clip should do it at least in one corner so now I'm going to trace my pattern to that will transfer to my canvas and it really isn't <laughs> exciting so I'm going to uh, go on tracing all my lines and then I'll come back I'm back I finished tracing uh, the pattern that I've drew uh, you don't have to draw yourself if you don't want to. There are lots of uh, free printables of patterns. If it's a mosaic, if it's for a um, stained glass, uh, whatever, uh, just look it up on the internet and print it and you have what a design. Uh, this is largely a... a inspired by uh, of course Rene Macintosh that I really love uh, this kind of patterns so uh, now I'm going to use a permanent marker black permanent marker to go and make all the outlines of my uh, design like so and after I'll uh, make all the lines then we start uh, with the technique uh, which I will call glazing technique although I'm not using a glazing medium I don't have a glazing medium so uh, of course I have <laughs> adjusted it to what I do have if you remember and you're following my uh, videos I've been mixing a textile dye with a uh, gesso and also a uh, food coloring with gesso and I really like the results and I was thinking about and I also used glue and it uh, gave me a crackle which was a nice surprise and then I thought maybe I should uh, try and mix uh, the same thing with glue only glue and it was just I don't know what to call it fate I stumbled upon uh, the video by Studio Civil Creek and she used a glazing medium with acrylic and made this technique and I'm going to use 
do the same technique only I'm doing I'm taking a white glue and I'm going to mix it with food coloring so again things that everyone can uh, have and reach and not very expensive at least not here the food coloring and of course white glue are not expensive so I'm going to finish a uh, tracing all the lines and I'll come back I'm back so I've got the pattern here and now I'm going to use this palette uh, to make my glazing a uh, paint if you, I can call it that I've got a white glue and I'm gonna put a, a little bit of glue in each of these uh, small uh, what do I call it containers indentations whatever you know what I mean here we go and I will put a little bit more here we'll see maybe I will need it for the background so I will need more and just for the heck of it here more we'll see so I've got the white glue and now I've got this on my food uh, gel color uh, coloring and I'm going to go with some kind of pink and purples for my flowers a uh, green of course for my leaves and I'll uh, leave the leaves for uh, later I'll start uh, with the f uh, flowers I'm putting a little drop of uh, food coloring in each and it doesn't want to get out here we go and I always take at least two colors for uh, each thing like one a lighter one darker so I have something to blend it with and so it will be interesting like I've done here I will move from uh, red to orange or from yellow to orange and light blue to darker blue or between like a yellow or orange to this olive green so I'm putting down a uh, color so I will have uh, a, a shades to play with on my canvas and again it doesn't want to get out Okay, let's take another one. Here we go. Now, my advice to you that if you have a, a brush that has this kind of diagonal cut, I don't remember how it's called, uh, use it. It's easier to work uh, inside this kind of shape, but you don't have to any fine brush uh, can be used and whatever is uh, easier for you to uh, to work with so here we go I'm starting with light on the inside and I'm hoping for a darker like so and trying to blend and if it doesn't work I'm just get <laughs> I'm reading myself off uh, most of it you see I'm trying to remove part of it because it's too much and I want as I said some shading here we 
go. That's better. So basically that's what I'm doing and I'm going to alternate with the colors between the, I don't know, petals, what to call it. I'm just picking up uh, each time a little bit more of the paint and this is some kind I'm calling it glazing only because as you can see you can still see the background it adds color but you still see the background and let's see if I can I'm only taking more color on the tip of the brush like so and blending it I hope you can see what I'm doing so where the purple is the really dark purple you can hardly see the background but still there is interest and I'm taking more of this uh, glue so I will again have a lighter color here and if it's too much I'm getting rid of the excess like so so I'm just going to continue doing this uh, this flower like so and I'll be back with the now I'm taking a I took a little bit of blue here just so I will have more a uh, shade and not only purple to my flower like so When I'm uh, painting th something like that, I'm always considering, uh, I don't know if considering or, or planning, I'm like, where is the bottom or something, or where the light is coming from. It's not like I have a light, but I'm trying to decide if I have a, like a source of a light. So if the source of light is from here, then here will be a the lighter colors and here will be the darker ones and that's how you create a dimensional art and not a flat one so that's what I'm doing too much took too much paint but okay we'll manage <laughs> somehow maybe I can here we go while it's still wet and the effect is quite nice sometimes you, you get something by accident that is even better so I'm going to continue uh, painting my flowers and I'll come back and I'm just going to do one of the circles so you will see what I'm doing again taking the darker color uh, to one side and blending but still having the darker color 
to one side and a lighter color on the other like so and I've got too much of this <laughs> I want a little bit of pink here yeah like so I'll be back I'm back so as you can see I've already a uh, colored my uh, leaves and flowers I've used a uh, forest green and olive green for uh, the leaves and I thought about leaving it like this with the background with the gray break background but I've decided that I want to add color to my background and not leave it like that so I'm going to be brave and pick up a from a, the purple and blue that I've got left here and again I want my edges to be darker so I'm a, starting with the edges alternating with the blue and the purple so I will have a nice color and I'm trying uh, to go from dark to lighter shade just a hint like so you're just a uh, playing around it's not a, a like I can uh, really control all this uh, glue and uh, food coloring I kind of like it the effect that it gives me so basically this is it the glaze uh, and I've got here too much so I'm wiping it with my finger and going in with more uh, glue so I can blend it like so here in uh, towards the middle I just want a hint of color I don't want a lot of it and if it's too much I'll just get in like so and smear it with my finger and maybe a little bit darker underneath my flowers to give the impression of some kind of shadow and again I've picked too much I'm going back and forth so it will blend and <laughs> smear, smear all around so basically this is it I'm going to continue and get back when I'm finished I'm back I finished all the background I really like what came out of it and this is it this is the finished piece I hope uh, this will give you some ideas to experiment with this glaze technique it's still wet in several places I hope you can see all the details in the background and this is it so I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope it will give you a lot of ideas thank you for watching and thank you for leaving me comments below I'll be seeing you in my next video. Bye for now.